materials you're going to be using at the zoo. And I'll be refer referring to a lot of notes, and obviously this is a high level of professionalism. Bob <laughs> demands from everybody. So let's start talking about the, the Marquette marker, uh, which some of you are familiar with the kind of tip it has, which is similar to the old, now defunct, uh, Design 229LF. Uh, the great thing about this is its tip. It has a uh, conical tip. which is what you need to draw on, on the edge of the cone. And that allows you to maintain your point for fine lines, but yet you can get these wonderful thick and thin lines. So with, you know, with any new marker for you experienced ones, you know, just play with it. Do your jigsaw shapes thick and thin. Can you feel of it? Your dagger strokes in both directions for texture. Uh, anything else, just drawing boxes, drawing circles, playing with your line weights to get control of it. And, but that way, if you, if you always draw on the edge, it's almost like working with a, um, with a brush instead of a marker point. You're not going to wear down your point, and you're going to be able to maintain that control of thick and thin. Uh, I don't know if you can see my mind, in yours will find that you develop to sort of a natural bend for a while. So you just check for that and that's your brush end. The other thing too is a lot of times out of the package they come out and they're a bit inserted too far. The wonderful thing is you can actually grab the tip and pull it out just a little bit. So you've got you know an eighth of an inch or a sixteenth here um, of extra distance and that gives you more of the, the versatility that you want for, for caricature in live. Uh, and if it starts to slip back in, just get a pair of pliers and you can crimp the tip of the barrel just ever so slightly. Uh, the other thing with Marquettes is they're not as juicy as the design uh, markers used to be. And so they get tired. They don't, uh, they don't run out of ink, but they get tired. So have more than one on the go. And when you find your line feels like it's dragging or drying up a little bit, just cap it, switch to the other marker and let it rest somewhere in your pocket or on your stand point down for a bit and come back to it when the next marker gets tired. And these things last forever. They have a really great ink supply. Obviously you got to bleach the, the um, working with color. This should be foamy sheet. Must have. Put it under your bleed sheet. It is great not only for your line texture, but when we start working with the color sticks, it uh, allows you more control as well as being a little easier on your wrist. I just keep it under my bleed sheet at all times. The Prisma Color Art Sticks that you're going to be using. Wonderful thing, they are not um, soft lead art sticks. Don't confuse them with the new pastels if you ever go out to get them yourself. The Prisma Color new pastels look identical, but they're pastels. These are more like a pencil crayon without the wood and they're not going to smudge. You can't use a light color lar. So that they're not going to smudge. They come, they're about four inches long. You don't need them so long. Break them in half, and that'll do you for most of the season. Uh, Bob will worry about the, the, the range of uh, colors he's going to give you. For the flesh color, you'll, they've got a peach and a yellow ochre. It'll be your two main skin colors. Get yourself a little carrying box. This is uh, an old cigarette case that I bought. Uh, from a dollar store, I put a piece of foam in it. It's got all my my uh, art sticks in it. You can also get these great little dollar store or, or Walmart compartmentalized cases. And they're great for arranging your art sticks by, by palette. I've got my blues, my purples, my fleshes and pinks, browns and blacks. Uh, yellows, oranges, reds, and other kind of secondary blue greens. Very handy. They're really great to work with. They're really easy. I'm going to run through a few things now. Um, but the only thing you have to be careful of while working outside is that if they start getting hot, they'll start to sweat because they are waxy, and you'll find your colors going on a lot, a, a lot heavier. Um, so it's just an issue of control, and that of course you're going to get it on your fingers. But otherwise, the stuff is great. You don't need fixative. You don't need anything great for color. Working with the art sticks, 
You don't want to use the tip. You want to save your point again for when you do need to draw lines with it. Is it darker color bar? You're going to hold it and, and work more with the side of it. And with your foamy sheet underneath, you get just natural gradients happening. And it'll take a bit just to wear off that edge. But you want to preserve a point when you want it to go back in to either draw details or to do a core shadow or something. Because this is retail too, the customer isn't going to want to sit for more than you know, three to five minutes for a black and white and ten for a color. And I assume prices will be by face. Um, so you want to remember, remember your real art school tricks, leaving white of the page to preserve your highlights. You don't have to fill in the entire shape, which the newbies are going to have to learn. Another fresh sheet. Basic shapes. So, like any time, look for your highlights, and your highlights on retail caricature are going to be varying between actual observed highlights and just volume shading. Shading the spheres and the blobs and the planes of the face to describe the form. And more often than not, you're going to be using just your own observational skills for the volumes of the face than trying to actually match however the sunlight is, is hitting your subject. So there are the quick few swipes. You've got your fill. A little bit outside. It's really great. Favorite color, this wonderful kind of warm peacock blue. Just fantastic against skin tones and helps cover a myriad of mistakes when you're doing a quick sketch. You don't need pencil. Don't use your pencil. It's part of the magic act. People love to see the fact that you're working without a net. And they can't draw anyways, so they're not going to know any better. Newbies, do not fill it in. It takes too long. It wastes your, your materials, and it's got no volume. Use gradients to, to have the, the light fall off on a plane, which gives it a lot more interest. Look for areas of contrast. Make them up if you have to. You're the artist here. You're in charge. Remember, to, once you've left your whites, also to go back and add some core shadows where you need it. Take shadowing, and we're right back to Art Class 101. Okay, I'm going to go recruit some neighbors for faces, and we'll try a few examples.